Hello and welcome back to the Movie Memo Recaps. Today we are going to recap a 2020 movie titled One Night in Bangkok. Please be advised that there might be spoilers. The movie opens with an elderly American guy called Kai boarding an aircraft to Bangkok. He served in two wars and went on to become a hitman who never missed an assignment. He arrived in Bangkok to seek revenge for the murder of his family during their vacation a month ago. After Thailand's authorities failed to catch the culprits, Kai decided to take matters into his own hands. When he arrives, he hails a motorcycle taxi and orders the driver to take him to a restaurant in downtown Bangkok. After arriving, he heads straight to the restroom, where someone has left him a black bag with all of the items he requires for his revenge plan. With only one night to get everything done, he doesn't waste any time and gets an internet taxi to his first stop. Shortly later, Far, the online taxi driver, picks him up, and they begin their journey to Kai's first stop. Kai compliments Far, pointing out how uncommon it is to see a gorgeous young woman working as a taxi driver. Far tells him she enjoys her job, meeting new people, and working hard to support her brother's cancer treatment. Kai sympathizes and hopes that her brother will recover. He offers $6,000 to be his all-night driver, but she must disable her online taxi app. He gives her $1,000 in advance and promises to pay the balance later. She is free to end the trip at any time. Far accepts the agreement since she needs the money to pay for her brother's cancer treatment. The first destination is a lawyer who assisted the one responsible for his family's misery. Kai then shoots her with a silencer while remaining in her office, pretending to be in a meeting with her. He then exits and informs the secretary that he needs a pink taxi and will be staying at a specific hotel. Kai returns to the taxi and instructs the driver to proceed to the next destination, which is the police station. During the drive, Far becomes perplexed and inquires whether Kai is in trouble. He assures her that it is nothing more than a business transaction with a nearby police officer. Kai visits a flat and engages in a brief altercation with a police officer. I know you he quickly overwhelmed him and shot him dead. Kai enters the bedroom, finds a red toolbox under the bed, and opens it. There is a large amount of money inside, as well as various case files. He hunts for a specific file and, once found, rushes back to Far's taxi to proceed to the third site. While driving, Far realizes Kai has a head injury from their previous confrontation. She pulls over and attends to his wound, asking what occurred. Kai claims he just struck a wall and does not go into detail. Shortly thereafter, an eccentric police detective named Shorat rushes to the crime scene for the lawyer's murder. Shorat recognizes Kai from security footage, but he is unsure about the source of the conflict. Kai and Far stop at a nearby food cart for dinner, and she asks him why he gave her so much cash. Kai explains that he is rewarding her for her kindness and promises to give her another $1,000 when he finishes. She's thrilled with the extra money because it's her most ever. She immediately begins to inquire about his business. Kai emerges, revealing that a drunk driver killed his family in a car accident. The offender, however, received no punishment because he was the son of a wealthy businessman. Kai is determined to exact revenge on everyone involved in his family's tragedy. When Far learns about Kai's family, she breaks down in tears. In addition, she lost one foreign family member in a car accident. Despite the overwhelming evidence, Thai officials quickly close the investigation and release the drunk driver. As they continue their trek, the police detective visits the second murder scene. Kai tells Far to drive him to the next stop, a nightclub, where he enters the bathroom claiming to wash up. Two men enter the restroom, and the perpetrator, accompanied by a worker, enters a stall to finish his last, while his bodyguard waits outside. Kai assassinates the security guard and proceeds to the stall where the man is trying to conceal himself. The woman flees, leaving Kai to question the suspect about killing a family with his Porsche. The man, shaking with terror, begs forgiveness, saying it was an accident. Kai fires, but he does not kill him, and then vanishes. The nightclub reports a third shooting incident to the detectives. Fortunately, he discovers the sufferer is still alive and transports him to the hospital. Kai tells Far to drive to a hospital to meet his next target. However, when she sees the gun, she becomes afraid. Kai assures her that he does not wish to murder her, therefore, she should not be concerned. When she expresses concern that he is using her car to murder innocent people, Kai explains his motive. Kai explains that his daughter and granddaughter died in the Bangkok tragedy, as did all of the people he killed. Far recognizes the situation and expresses concern that she was the driver of the vehicle that killed Kai's family. Kai admits that picking her was not a coincidence, he expressly chose her to be his driver because he planned to murder her first. However, the cross hanging from the rearview mirror stopped him. As they get to the hospital, Kai tells Far to wait quietly at the end of the street to avoid notice. The victim's parents are shouting furiously, each blaming the other for their son's situation. This wealthy family, having bribed the authorities to get their son out of trouble, is now crying as their son lies in a coma. Kai enters the hospital room, holding the family's bodyguard prisoner. Kai had spared the boy's life at the nightclub so that he could confront his parents, and he shoots the tycoon's wife as she tries to shout at him. 
The businessman becomes worried and questions what they did to deserve this. Kai accuses the businessman of hiding his son's sins, including his entire family's deaths. That's why Kai resolves to take matters into his own hands, assassinating the tycoon first, followed by the guard and, lastly, the son. The police officer's wife informs him that the lawyer and the deceased officer worked together on multiple homicide cases. She informs him of the traffic tragedy that killed Kai's daughter and granddaughter. The wealthy businessman's son was responsible for killing Kai's family, but the boy's father's bribery of law enforcement kept him from facing the sentence. She is certain that Kai is now seeking vengeance on everyone involved. When the police officer enters the patient's room, he discovers Kai has taken a nurse hostage. The investigator tries to persuade him that he understands his motives and is a fine person who believes he must go to extremes to obtain justice. He begs Kai to quit seeking vengeance, stating justice has been served, but Kai says there is one more person he must deal with, the judge who let the perpetrator go after accepting a bribe. The detective follows Kai as he leads the nurse to the parking lot. The cop pleads with Kai to let the nurse go, and he promises to stop hunting him, even dropping his firearm. However, the police officer's companion approaches from behind and shoots at Kai, striking the nurse. Kai shoots back, killing the detective's partner. Kai flees quickly but sustains abdominal injuries. The investigator ends his pursuit and focuses on the injured nurse and his partner. Far contacts Kai's phone and returns it to him. She warns him to stay low since police are everywhere. Far observes Kai's injuries and understands his need for medical attention, yet he declines to visit the hospital due to his fear of capture. Far then leads Kai to a secluded road, where she repairs his gunshot wound. While at the hospital ruminating on what happened to his partner and the nurse, the detective's wife and infant arrive to discuss the latest occurrence. The wife informs him that a taxi driver named Far picked up a passenger, but she turned off the app so that they couldn't monitor her. She also assures her husband that Kai is a war veteran who has no criminal history. She reminds him that Kai's father was like him. After hearing this, the detective maintains silence. After caring for Kai's wound, he says he'll address the last person on his list, but first asks Far why she's aided him. She claims she wants to make amends for her previous actions. Far confesses she made a lot of stupid decisions recently and had to deal with the repercussions. The wealthy family paid her to keep quiet, and she used the money to buy a new car and cover her brother's hospital fees. She knew if she didn't take the bribe, they'd kill her. Far claims that she worked in the hotel industry and turned down multiple requests to sleep with customers despite her financial hardships. She informs Kai that he is the first man to respect her for what she does. Kai presents her with a bag full of cash, as well as a hard drive containing his life savings of over $1 million. He claims that the final objective is the hardest to reach, he may not survive, and even if he does, he may end up in prison. Kai encourages her to take her brother and the money to a location where they may start a new life. Before driving him to his final target's home, Far offers him a deep hug. The target is a Japanese man named The Fixer. His daughter's bodies were hit at the traffic accident scene and he mediated between the judge and the tycoon. Kai also recruited him to put up the rifles and mark the target's locations. Despite Far's attempts to persuade him to halt and reconsider, Kai is unconvinced. He is firm, valuing his need for vengeance above all else, and he intends to kill him. Kai examines the level of protection before launching his strike. He obtains an automatic weapon and dispatches all of the security personnel. He summons the Japanese fixer, urging him to come out and confront him like a man. When the fixer emerges, he expresses respect for how he eliminated his security men. Kai claims that he hasn't finished his revenge, to which the fixer responds that he hasn't started and hasn't killed anyone in a while. When Kai, filled with rage, charges at him, the fixer responds by shooting him. He throws the gun to the ground, suggesting that they fight without weapons. Kai charges again and battles ferociously, although he is fatigued from his previous encounters. After struggling to avoid the fixer's strikes, he falls to the ground. Far unexpectedly rushes to Kai's aid, and the Japanese threaten to shoot them both. He aims at her, but a police officer shoots him to protect them. Kai offers an apology for taking the life of the detective's partner, while the firefight claims the life of the nurse. He claims that Far had nothing to do with forcing her to drive him. The detective reluctantly heeded his wife's advice and immediately ordered Far to transport Kai to safety before more police arrived. He promises to overhaul Thailand's judicial system so that such tragedies do not occur again. A few moments later, Far drives the dying Kai and grants his last wish. He imagines himself back in Hawaii, going into the ocean and gazing up at the sky. Far had driven him to the ocean where he died quietly while sleeping in her car. Thank you for watching, if you're new don't forget to subscribe for more recaps, until next time, have a nice day.